Hello, welcome back to the second video for Microsoft Access. As you recall, in the first video, we started our business problem with three different spreadsheets. Our business had a table called Products that was in Excel, and another spreadsheet called the Customers that we know, and then the third spreadsheet that was there was called the Vendors. And what we tried to show you last time was that in Microsoft Access, you can combine spreadsheets and put them into a single file and create applications with them. So far we've imported a customer table. I'll double click this. We've imported a product table and we've imported a vendor table. And so now we can see that these are all the data items that are in our business. Let's talk for a minute about the relationships between different tables in our program. First of all looking at the products table you would see that if we were working in Excel we would have to include all the information about every product in every line. Let's look at the first line for example. It's the uh, muriatic acid. It comes from Boston Chemicals but if you look down at the chlorine test at the bottom and the floating chlorine dispenser those are also from Boston Chemicals and so you see that there are some duplicate informations in the lines that we have on our table. So there's some problems with that. First of all they waste data storage space not a huge deal these days but it is it's an issue but more importantly if you have more than one copy of an address you can have room for mistakes in your database for instance if somebody updates the information on the street address for the vendor and uh, you don't know which one is the correct one then you have confusion and so there's a better way in access and in every database system we split tables according to their needs. For instance, we have all the products on the left side. We'll make that our own table. But then the vendors, they also should match. And so we can take out the duplicates in the vendors table and still have a relational database. So you can see that the products table and the vendors table have been split. You can also see that we've added a field called the vendor ID in each of the tables. And so those help link the tables together. So for example, the first product has a vendor ID of 1, which is Boston Chemicals. And then we would look at the lower lines. We see the chlorine test kit also has a vendor ID of 1. And so that refers to Boston Chemicals as well. And then the last one, the floating chlorine dispenser, also has an ID of 1 for the vendor. And so all three of those point to the same row in the vendors table. And so the duplication is no longer there and we can update only one place for instance if we need to update the address for Boston Chemicals we have one place to update the information and then the entire database knows where they are. A database management system or a relational database management system known as an RDBMS is an old idea it was started in the 70s with IBM and they still have a, a leading product on the market called DB2. Oracle took up the challenge in the early 80s when IBM was a little bit slow and Oracle has become one of the leading companies in managing databases. Microsoft has their product called SQL Server which runs a lot of companies and then if you're into the free version you can buy or you can obtain MySQL. MySQL is extremely popular on websites using open source software with Linux and with uh, PHP and MySQL. Now if you're on the desktop and you're only working with maybe four or five people then Microsoft Access is a good tool and that's why you're learning right now because it is a relational database management system even though it's not as big as the others it still has the same principles. Now FileMaker is another competition they have a version for the Macintosh as well as for Windows and so those are some of the ideas behind relational databases. Now let's go back to our database that we were working on now let's look at some of the tables that are in our program. Uh, let's look at the products table. Open that up. And then open up the vendors table. Now these are the two that have a relationship. We're using vendor ID in the vendor column. And the product table also has a vendor ID listed at the very end of it. And so we have the ability to link these two tables together. To make that link we have to go to the item called database tools and look for the icon called relationships. So now we have the menu called show table. Which tables are we interested in right now? 
we're going to leave customer table alone but we want to link product table and vendor table so I'm going to select product table and add it to the screen now click the vendor table and add it as well and choose close now looking at these two tables on the screen I notice right away that the product ID has a primary key symbol next to it that's good that's the index for the products we intend this ID number to act as the primary key for the table called vendor table however it is not listed as a primary key and so when we imported data at, very, at the very beginning of this assignment there was an error so let's go look at our vendor table let's double click that and I'm going to right click on it and choose design view which brings up the definitions of all of our fields over here where it's got vendor ID I'm going to right click in the column or in the uh, row header and uh, there's an option there to turn a primary key on let's click there and now we see a primary key I'm going to right click and choose save now you may receive an error at this point that says uh, there's some null values that that means that primary keys cannot be empty if that is the case then what you need to do is go look at the data sheet view and if you see any blank rows like in the first few items here or down at the end then you need to delete those blank rows so that would clean up the data so that you don't have any blanks in vendor ID so let's go back to the design view make sure that this key is turned on and then we're ready to proceed let's close this table now if you look at the relationship screen you can see that both of these tables have a primary index or a primary ID number now the relationship between these tables is this a vendor has an ID a product has also its own ID but it is linked by telling us the vendor ID here I'm going to click on vendor ID and drag the mouse over here to vendor ID in the other table it says we are going to make a relationship between these two tables I'm going to tell it to enforce referential integrity that means we're not allowed to create any new numbers that don't relate to vendors or or uh, products and so it just makes sure that those numbers always correspond let's click join type and we're going to say that we're going to include all the records from the vendor table and only those from the product table where the join fields are equal click OK and click create and so now you see a symbol here that says there's one vendor for many different products so the infinite sign means many and now we know that a vendor can have lots of different products let's right click and save this and we'll go back to our vendor table now double click it something new here as you can see there's a plus sign listed along the first column let's click the first plus sign for Boston Chemicals you can see that Boston Chemicals is related to product ID number 1, 2, 4, 6, 11, and 17 let's collapse that by clicking the minus sign plastic stuff incorporated they also have a list of many different chemicals and so this is the relationship that we just defined we linked the ID numbers in the two different columns so the vendor ID number appears in both tables and now the computer knows what those relationships are let's go back to the vendor table and continue looking through to see what products are listed many many companies only have one product some may have none such as zap care group so they have no products but they are listed as a vendor okay so now we have two different tables that are related now let's take a look again at the forms do you remember the product form let's open that up the product form shows us each product with a product ID and we can scroll through the list and see what the products are and you notice the last item here called vendor ID it just shows a number of which company number sells this product what we would like to do is to show the company name because 
a number is very difficult to remember. So let's close this form and let's create a new one. So let's go to the product table and we're going to create a new form based on that table. So with the product table selected here, I'm going to go to a new button called the form wizard. A form wizard allows us to create a form using data from more than one table. So the form wizard says, what fields do you want to show on your form? Well, we're going to primarily be worried about the products. So I'm going to click the double arrow. All the product items will be shown on the form. Plus, I want to pick the vendor name. So that is stored in the vendor table. I'll click on vendor table and choose the second item with a single arrow. And so the vendor name appears. Let's click next. Now it says, how do you want to view your data? Well, I'm more interested in showing by products first, so I'll leave this selected. And click Next. How would you like to view it? The layout of the table, I'll just leave it as columnar. That seems to work fine. And I'm going to name this thing as the product form with vendor name. So we'll have two different forms. This one here should be better than the last. And so now it looks a lot like the previous form. We had a product form and now we have another one that shows the vendor name at the bottom. So if we scroll through the list you can see as we go through the product ID the vendor name at the bottom changes as well. Let's compare that to the original one. The product form. The product form shows the vendor ID but not the vendor name. So, since this is an improvement over the last one, let's just close this form, close this one, and let's delete the product form. So I'm going to right click on the name and choose delete. And it says, are you sure you want to delete this? I sure am. And so that product form is now more helpful. Let's do another form that shows our vendors, but the vendors, instead of just showing the name and the company. Let's show a subform down here of what products they sell. Now that the two f tables are related, this is quite simple. I'm going to close all relation everything here, and then we're going to go to the vendor table now, and I'm going to create a new form using the form wizard. And now we are going to show the vendor plus the products that they sell. So let's go to the vendor table, add all the fields. Also, let's go to the product table and let us add all of the items except for the vendor ID. Click next and next. Let's use tabular. Now you notice we're going to create the vendor table. Let's change that to the vendor form. And we're going to show this with products. And then there's a subform that's going to be created. A subform you'll see in a minute. Here is the subform. Doesn't look like it's the right size, but we can change that. So now when I go through the vendors and I select vendor 2, you notice that there's a list here of the items that Aqua Mechanics sells us. Let's go back. Plastic Stuff sells us the hose, the pool cover, and the drain. So now our vendor form actually has more use than just showing names and addresses. It shows us what products they sell. And so now we have a vendor form with products. I'm going to close that. Let's delete the original vendor form since we have a better form. One more thing we should change. Let's open up the vendor form. This here is an awkward size. We can actually modify forms quite easily if we right click on the tab and choose design view. Design view is the architect's view. You're allowed to resize fields, move them around. So let's like take product table and move it over a little bit. 
Let's see if we can move this down. Create it, make it a little larger. If we can delete that. No, we can't. And so you can see that I've moved some of these fields around. You can move them according to your your personal preferences. But if I want to see what the form looks like again, I right click on the tab and I choose form view. And so now you can see at the bottom that the this form, this subform is a little bit wider. So we can see each of the products that are sold by each company. So in summary, we have taken the original tables. We have defined a relationship between the vendor ID in each of these. And that allows us to look at the vendors in the data sheet by showing their related items, which items they sell. Also, we have created some forms that include subforms and we can create products, a product form that has the actual name of the vendor on it. And so those are all possible because of the idea of relating tables to each other. We'll add some more relationships in the future lessons, but for now let's stop for this lesson and save our work.